small, compact, and still full frame, the A7C looks like it's going to be a great camera. Let's check it out. What is going on guys, it's Dakota from Decarwell Photography and in today's video I am in studio checking out the new Sony A7C. Sony just dropped the A7S 3 and then came out with the A7C, which is leaving a lot of creatives a little confused to what its true market is. Throughout this video, we'll be discussing this camera's pros and cons from a photography standpoint, as well if it's worth getting over the A7 III. Let's dive right in. Small, light, and compact, this camera is essentially an A7 III and a 6600 body. I love the small and light design, but then I remember that I have big hands and it's hard to get a firm grip on the camera with a few of my fingers hanging off. Long live the flippy screen. Yes, probably one of the biggest features that was left off of the a7 III, but it's available on the a7C. I love a good old articulating screen on any camera as it helps with vlogging, low and high angle shots, shooting in confined spaces, and being able to compose your shots better on a sunny day when the sun is just too bright in certain positions. The A7C sports the latest and greatest Sony autofocusing system, one that's a bit more capable than what you get on the older A7 III. The eye tracking was able to stay in focus 99% of the times during the shoot, even when Asia turned her head and wasn't looking directly at the camera. Its EV4 focus sensitivity ensures you can focus better once it gets dark as well. Overall, autofocus works very well, both in terms of delivering in-focus images and in terms of tracking the subject that you specify. The sensor in the A7C is the same that you would find in the A7 III, which essentially means you're going to be able to create amazing photos with great dynamic range. For this shoot, I paired the small camera body with my Sigma 105 and my trusty 85mm and got some amazing portraits. So a small compact body usually means you're going to miss out on a few features. In this particular scenario, we lost one of the SD card slots. Most photographers, including myself, really enjoy the reassurance of having two SD cards in their camera for those just in case scenarios. When I upgraded from APS-C to full frame a year ago, I was super stoked about using a larger viewfinder. I wasn't too stoked on going back to the APS-C version though especially when I'm used to it being in the middle of the camera like on my A7R 3 The one thing I was looking forward to using after hearing this camera was announced after the A7S 3 was its new menu system. But sadly, it comes with the same menu system as my A7R 3 This part was a tad bit disappointing as you would think Sony could just incorporate its new system on its new camera straight out of the box. But it's not the end of the world as I'm completely used to using this menu system like most Sony users, it'll be easy to navigate and adjust settings that I'm used to. I also think that Sony will eventually push out its new menu system to the A7C in a future firmware update, fingers crossed. Overall, this isn't a bad camera. But for the asking price of $1800, I really can't justify purchasing this as my main workhorse for photography, especially when the A7 III is 200 bucks more and is still one of the most revolutionizing hybrid cameras ever created. Also, with the rumors of the A7 IV being released next year, it really doesn't make much sense to me to purchase this. Now, this doesn't mean it's a horrible camera. I've seen a lot of really unfair reviews on this device without any actual testing being done. I think it could be used as a pretty good vlogging camera, especially with the interchangeable lenses and the flip out screen. Pop the 20mm f1.8 lens on this baby and I bet you get some great results. I could also see people who have been shooting on APS-C and wanting to upgrade to full frame select this camera over the A7 III and the A7R series due to its size and familiarity. But honestly guys, at the end of the day, do your research and find what's best for you. Don't just watch an angry reviewer spew out spec jargon for 5 plus minutes without ever testing the camera to sway your opinion. Every camera has its purpose and its specific market. My video was from a portrait photography standpoint and unfortunately the A7C just wasn't for me that doesn't mean it's not right for you. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below if you've used the A7C already and if you prefer it or not. Also, if you enjoyed the content, make sure you drop a like as it tremendously helps my channel. And click that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming content. Thanks again and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.